your shirt there, what's that say? Conor McGregor, UFC. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have been watching a little UFC since you've been out? No, nah, not really, but I like him. Yeah, he's, he's cool, man. I like that dude. He's a savage. Yeah, he's, he's fighting this Saturday, or a week from today. All right. Yeah. All right. Hi, Mitch. Welcome back to Hard Intentions YouTube channel. Uh, I got a guy here with me out new in prison at uh, a couple different prisons. Mike. How you doing, Mike? Doing good, brother. How are you? All right. All right. It's good to have you on my channel. Good to see yeah, you. Yeah, it's good to be here. Outside of the bars, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, let's just get right in this. Uh, so your name's Mike. Um, can you tell us, uh, like, uh, obviously you're in prison. Uh, what what year did you uh, get arrested? Yeah, I, I got I got arrested in uh, in, in October '95, and uh, spent about nine ten months in the county jail fighting my case. All right, and uh, you know, lost lost in trial and all that. You know that how that goes. All right. So what was your uh, what was your charge? What do you get convicted of? I got convicted of uh, premeditated attempted murder, use of a firearm, and uh, GBI. All right. Yeah. All right. And, and for and for that, they gave me uh, life with the possibility of parole, plus six years. All right. So so uh, so how old were you when you got arrested? I was twenty eight. All right. All right. Sixteenth, twenty ninth birthday, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so was that Orange County? Yeah, Orange County, California. Right, you're, you're originally from Orange County then, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, and so uh, you said you sat in a county jail for like eight, nine months? Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, like when you first got arrested, right? So like, let me ask you, like before you got this case, were you like involved with crime or drugs or underworld type shit or anything? No, not just just the complete opposite, man. I was just a, mm. just a working stiff, you know, working five days a week. You know, right. uh, living my life, you know, clean, uh, you know, partying a little bit, you know, but just, yeah, working. You're man. like Joe Lunchbox, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, yeah. all right. So going to jail was like, that was like a whole new experience for you then, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It was, uh, it was definitely an eye-opening experience because, you know, like I said, I'd never been to, been to the county jail, uh, never experienced the kind of people that, you, you know, that, that go to county jails, you know, the kind of the career criminals or the, you know, the people that just are in and out of, of that environment. Cause I didn't, you know, like I said, I didn't grow up around those kind of people. So yeah, going in there was, was just a totally new experience. And, right. Right. So what was it like for you? I mean, you know, I mean, once you get arrested, you get processed and you're in a, were you in a tank, like a dorm or cell? Yeah. Or what? Yeah. I was in a, when I got there, I was in an eight man tank. Uh, all all races, you know, black, white, Mexican, Asian. I mean, there was it was one of those kind of it was white. It's called a white banner tank, uh, and that was just basically everybody got along. And uh, yeah, I was there. I was there a good six months, and then uh, they ended up moving me to some other part of the jail, which was which was just uh, whites and Hispanics, yeah, and Asians. There's no black. Uh, yeah. And then uh, yeah, I was there a couple of months, and then you know. End up leaving and going to going to reception, but yeah. All right, so um, what kind of stood out in your mind? You know, like when you're sitting in there, like I mean, what kind of what's going through your head? You know, like uh, as far as like the uh, things you're experiencing, things you're seeing, the way people acted, or anything stand out in your head as far as like the county jail. Um, yeah, I mean, just just being you know seeing you know the you know gang members, you know righteous gang members, you know, of all, you know, you know, Hispanic, black, white, Asian, like yeah. I said, that was always, they were, they were always kind of intimidating. Like I said, I never, I never really been around it. And now I'm, 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 I'm thrust into this, being around them. And, you know, my, my whole thing was just, you know, not to, not to disrespect anybody, you know, not, you know, be friendly, outgoing, you know, don't yeah. try and be some kind of a tough guy, but just be respectful to everybody. And, you know, Anybody give you any game on how to act? No, I mean not, not really. You know, um, I just kind of, I just kind of picked up. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I realize I'm in an environment that I'm not familiar with. Right. So I need to buy my P's and Q's. I need to be, you know, uh, be, like I say, be respectful to everybody. Don't step on any toes. Don't, you know, just just go by the rules. You know, I, my whole right. thing was keep my mouth shut, my my ears open, 
and right. just listen, you know, and, and talk to, I mean, I was talking to people in there and learning different things, but you know, the biggest thing in county is just, you know, just don't disrespect people and, you know. Uh, yeah. Hey, you know, so like, were you, uh, were you around like prison gang members in there? Uh, just street gang members. Yeah, mostly just street, street. Yeah, definitely. All so. right. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, how was your interaction with him? Did you talk with him kind of guys and all that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, when you're an eight man, set, eight man tank, you know, the, the, the tank that I was in, it was, eight, it was, it was like a big cell. They had one side was the bunks. The other side was like a day room type thing. We had a shower phone and a TV. Right. So, you know, you're, you, you, you can't get away from them. You always get, you got to interact with them, talk to them. So, right. You know, I was always, I was playing, I was playing cards with them, you know, within a couple of weeks and, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, just chess and just, you know, different things like that, you know, because you're, those are the guys you're around. So you, you got to make it work. You got to make, you got to, you got to co-mingle peacefully, right. you know, right. so you, like I say, just being respectful and being, being cool. So cool with you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I never had any problems while I was in there. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so from there, uh, uh did them guys give any game on uh, what you're going to be headed to once you got to prison or? Um, not, not that I remember, not, 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 not I can think of, but um, definitely it was, it was, you know, a warm up to Wasco. You go, you know, prior to going to a reception, you know, you, you get a little game in the county, then you kind of transfer, you know, you're going to go to Wasco, your reception, wherever you do that at. Right. So that kind of prepares you. So you have a little, so going into reception, you, you, I had some game, I had some, you know, good understanding. Right, you know, right. Which so made that, was, smooth, that made it kind of like a smooth transition, you know, all going, right. going to Wasco. Yeah, wasn't that difficult uh, transition? Yeah. So, how long were you in uh, reception? Uh, six weeks. Yeah, I got right. there and I got there in uh, uh, May of '96, and I believe in like towards the end of June of, of, of the same year, you know, '96. Right, right. And how was Wasco the reception there? I mean, how was that? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, in the county, you don't really get to go outside. You don't get to, you get to feel the sun. So I remember. Being there in, in June or whatever it was, you know, it was 110 degrees. You know, I was yeah. in Kansas jail without any sun for, you know, nine months or so. And I just remember just going out to the yard for the first time and it just being unbelievably hot. Just, you know, yeah. I'm fair complexed. So being out in that sun just, you know, it cooks you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but it was nice to be outside. But, um, Did yeah, you have anybody uh, trying to, like, push a line, like politics or tell white guys how to live or any that kind no. of shit? Yeah. No. Nothing like Nobody that. Nobody's saying they had the yard or any that kind of shit. Um, the, yeah, there was one guy there. I, I, again, I didn't really uh, associate with the guy I talked to him. He was in a different building, I think. Yeah. So I didn't really see him a lot. But when we went to yard together, I'd see him. And, you know, again, I wasn't, you know, I, I kind of knew who, what he was about just by watching him. Yeah. So I kind of did. You know, I hung out with a couple of the guys that really weren't with the, with the business and all that. So, it's yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. And so from there, where'd you go? <laughs> Met you, Corcoran, yeah. Yeah. old Corcoran B Yard. Yeah, yeah, three B. Like, yeah. June or July of '96. I think I got there in yeah June of '96. Yeah, yeah. So you got there right before I did, actually. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I got there towards the end of '96. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's a level four yard. Yeah. So, uh, what kind of how do you feel about going to that kind of place? Well, the interesting thing about that place was when I was in the county, I don't know, you, you remember this when, you know, back in the shoe, we had those cops were setting up those fights back there in the shoe program. Right. We right. had the feds going in there. So when I was in the county jail, I was reading about that in the newspaper. And I'm thinking when I'm at Wasco, I mean, I mean that's the last place I wanted to go. That place sounded just horrible. Yeah, and I didn't really know anything about it. I mean, I, I didn't know that was in the shoe. I didn't know that was the main line or whatever. But, but you know, when I got my my papers to go to, from when I was at Wasco, they said, "Yeah, you're going to Cork." And you know, I just thought, "Oh shit." Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it was it was uh, I was a little little intimidated, a little scared <laughs> to say the least, walking yeah. on that yard for the first time. You know. Yeah, you thought you're going from the frying pan to the fire, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So, uh, like when you got there, right? That was '96, yeah. um, and like I said, that's right when I met you there. Um, uh, so, what was your, what was, uh, what was that like transitioning in, into that place? Uh, um, like yeah, say I, you're a little 
had a little intimidation factor going just on the way there. What was it like, actually? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you hit the yard for the first time, it's just a, it's just a, you know, overwhelming experience. You know, you, you know, your eyes are, you know, your eyes are this big, and you just want to, you know, I was just watching people, seeing people that you, you've never seen before in your life. I mean, like righteous, you know, gang members of, of all races, all ethnicities. Right. Um, you can just tell by looking at these guys; they're just, you know, they're with the business. And, right. Uh, Right. Like I said, like I said before, you know, I I was never around that, you know, growing up. So it was, it was just a, it was very intimidating. And so yeah. what I what I what I what my my whole thing was was to kind of associate with people who were like me, meaning people from suburbia who didn't you know grow up around that. We're just regular right. Joe's working class because you, know, you know you know as I do that there's there's all kinds of people that go into prison. You don't it's not just gang members or you know career criminals. It's it's normal people that have normal jobs that get caught up in doing something that end up going, yeah. you know, going there. So that's who I was trying to, you know, uh, hang out with and just, you know, be with. Cause I didn't, you know, I wasn't one of the, I wasn't a gang member. I never have been, never will be. So right. I didn't want to associate with that or be a part of it. Cause I just, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of guys put out the image, man, that, you know, everybody in the yard, man, is out stabbing people and killing people on a daily basis. And yeah. And, uh, here you are, you know, you're just a regular old guy. I drive up to prison, right. you're fucked up one time, and there you are right. with a life sentence. Uh, but, right. but while you were there, um, uh, so I know we had a riot there in 96. Right. Uh, yeah, I was there for that. Southern Mexicans and the Blacks had a pretty big riot. Right, and they right. slammed the whole yard. Yeah. Transferred a bunch of guys. The only guys that could come out for like four or five months were whites. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you you were you working there or doing? Anything? Yeah. You know. You know when you when you first get there, you know you're always A two B. You know, close B status. I was close okay, B. So A2B. what's what's A two B and all that stuff? What do you got? A two B means that you don't have a job or you're not in in any kind of a vocation. Um, so you're you're it, it, they limit your move your movement on a daily basis. I mean, you, right. you don't go out. You don't sell as much. You don't have right. as much freedom, you know. So I was I was A two B for shit. I don't know, yeah, four months, five months maybe. Then that riot happened that you were talking about. And a bunch of people got rolled up, as you know. So I was able to get on the yard crew because half the yard crew got rolled up. So I was able to get in on the yard crew. So I was then I I, you know, I was A one A, and uh, so you know my world opened up a little bit more on, on, for, as, as far as getting out to yard more often and. So. so you were on the yard crew with Matt. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Joshy. Yeah, and Steve. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you got to help move knives around the yard and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't do none of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, um, but, but you know, remember, you know, we got the weight pile back. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. We had the weights back for a few months. Yeah, me, me and Steve, uh, we, so we were working the weight pile. We had to rearrange the weights after every, after every yard. Right. And then get our drive on at lunchtime when everybody was locked up at count time. So yeah. that, that, that was that was pretty cool right there. Yeah, you know, a uh, uh, level four pin, you want to try to burn as much energy as you can during the day so you can get a little sleep at night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, they did take the weights away. And I, if I remember correctly, uh, they had like baseball, a little softball going on. Oh, yeah. A lot yeah. of handball. Oh, a ton of handball, um, you know, soccer, to, uh, softball. Uh, I used to yeah, rule was, the handball court. Yeah. What's that? I said I used to rule the handball court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until I showed up. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, the handball court was was definitely where I definitely uh, hung out the most. That was a game right. that I loved a lot. Right. And uh, I remember uh, the south side of there, Ernie. He's a hard, yeah. small ball yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah. He made a pair of gloves for me to play handball the small ball in. Yeah. 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 People in that pen, uh, you know, for all the all the uh, uh, hype about Corcoran, you know, it was a serious place, and there oh, was yeah. a lot of violence there. But yeah. overall, I mean, it was a pretty decent place to be. Yeah, as far yeah, as level fours go. I mean, you, you know, you got your stabbings once in a while, and you know, you, I mean, that, that's going to go on all level fours. I think pretty much wherever you go. Right. But, yeah. Once once you got a stabbing out of the way, you went three or four months without. You know, too much, too many problems. Maybe a fist fight here and there, but 
yeah. fist fights, they just roll the two dudes up, you know, most of the time and, and you know, normal program. Right, uh, right. But, yeah, I was there. Uh, uh, so, on that yard, playing handball and different things, you did interact with, you know, gang members. And, oh, yeah. And guys that uh, you maybe had some prison violence going on and, you know, yeah. some serious criminal uh, elements there. And so how uh, how do you view those type of guys? I mean, do they act like, you know, any different than uh, – I mean, how do they act? Did it, did it, was it what you expected or – Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, you know, after, after I've been there a few months, you know, you, like I say, you, you watch people, you watch how they act, how they talk, how they carry themselves, and, you know, you, you get used to it, you know. You know, I'm sure, you know, you've been in, for, you know, all those years, you know, you, you – you, you know the lingo, you know the talk, you know how they how people walk, and you know you know what they're about, and right. you know, and they all act. You know, most most of those guys act pretty similar with their with their attitude, their right. you know how they talk, how they carry themselves. So you know, you give them that respect, and uh, you know, like I say, nine times out of ten, you're not going to have any problems. And, and like I, said, I had zero problems. I, I treat everybody with respect, especially you know these gang members. I know they're about the violence. I know they're about picking up a piece yeah. and uh, putting it in you. For, for you know the smallest thing you know so I was yeah but uh my experience though is uh you know me I, I mean I was already at the point kind of where I was like you know hey I'm never getting out and then right. uh, I don't give a fuck I, I really didn't give a fuck for the most part I was still kind of involved with some illegal shit and yeah you know, partying and so you know I, uh the preconceived notion of them guys is there's one way but actually um I used to interact with a lot of them you know and uh they're just yeah. like, to me, they were just regular guys. I used to just talk to them like I talked to anybody else, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and they, didn't take, the, they didn't take offense to it, you know? Yeah, that's, that's the thing, though. You know, you, I, you know, you, because I didn't grow up around these guys, you know, talking to them, I was a little intimidated. I didn't want to say something wrong, say something right. to offend them, you know? Because, you, know, you, you know, again, I'm still, still new to the system, level four, Corcoran. Right. Right. You know, the last thing you want to do is disrespect a, you know, a gang member. Well, I mean, you know, you're not going to tell them, hey, your Vario's this or your hood's that or, you know, clown. No. I mean, but, I mean uh, <clears throat> you know, in general, daily activity, man, I mean, I used to talk to them guys just like they were anybody else. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and like I, said, I, I was on that yard two and a half years, and uh, but like I say, a good, the, you know, the last, you know, year and a half, two years where I started to feel comfortable, people started to get to know me. I started, I started to kind of get out of my shell and talk to more people, feel more comfortable talking to those kind of guys. Right. You know, right. and then and then you know I start, I was talking to you know gang members from the Met, the, you know the South Siders, you know, the, the Black, you know Bloods and Crips. I was I was you know there's a few people that I talked to you know because right. I think we had on the yard crew I was talking to them or I'd see them or I'd see them someplace or they're in my building or whatever. So you get right. to you know build up that confidence and you know feel comfortable being in that environment so I can talk to people. So it, that, right. that 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 took time, but it, it came, but it, it took a little time. Right. So, right. You know, but One like saying the beginning. Uh, uh, people are kind of shocked when I tell them, man, that, uh, you know, Corcoran level four, uh, you know, like with the, with the, with the Mexican population, they had Northerners and Southerners on the same yard. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it actually worked out pretty good for the whole time I was there. I don't know yeah. what happened after I left, but a lot of people trip out on that because, uh, the, you know, like, like once again, uh, uh, a lot of these guys that uh, they push the thing like uh, you know South Siders and Northerners can never be in the same prison. And, and yeah, well, they well you know, when I when I left when I left Donovan in '05, I went to New Corcoran, and it was there was no Northerners there. But after about six months, they integrated Northerners there. So I was there three years, and there was just as many South Siders as there was Northerners on the yard. Eventually, yeah, and they got along. They got along fine. There was no you know, yeah. No yeah, problem. see, people have a preconceived notion that those guys don't program on the same yard together, and actually they do. Yeah. Uh, depends on the prison, you know? Oh, yeah. 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 So um, you were in Corcoran for a couple of years then. Yeah. Yeah, I was there two and a half years. And right, I, went so to, I went to my annual, and because uh, I was trying, you know, being from Orange County, I wanted to try and get, you know, more south, make it easier on my family to come and visit me. Right. So, Put in for a transfer to Lancaster, which is the was the closest level four to Orange County. Yeah, so I, ended up, I ended up getting that and uh, going going level four there on the was it B yard we were on or 
Because you were there too, but like, was yeah. it B yard? Well, remember. when I was there, it was one, two, three, four. Okay, so maybe it was... Well, I was on uh, one yard and three yard. Yeah. Okay. I know there was two, there was two level fours and a level three and level one. I was on one level fours. I can't remember which one it was, B or, or two or I can't remember. Maybe Corcoran or... Uh... Oh, Lancaster. Oh, Lancaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was uh, you, C Yard. You got, there, you got there after me. C Yard, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and then I uh, moved over to A Yard as a plumber, and I got an arts and corrections over there. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. Wow. <laughs> hey, so while you were in level four, did you see any, like, extreme violence that kind of, like, shook you, like, like um, uh, yeah, shocked I was you or? Yeah, the one thing that stuck in my mind at Corcoran was uh, it's one of those things that you know you just you, you see it you can't unsee it. Uh, yeah, it was there was there was it was uh, on the basketball court. Um, the South Sider, I guess, had to get dealt with. He didn't know it was coming, and he was playing basketball with a couple other South Siders, and they yeah they they ran up on him on the court and just put a piece in him, and yeah, just did that dude dirty. And, uh, oh, was that that dude that came from Tehachapi? I think so. Yeah. And he sat yeah. on the bench after they stabbed him uh, for for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he stabbed. Yeah, I don't him. know. I just, I just happened to be either on the track or or somewhere. I didn't really play basketball there, but I just happened to be looking at it. I didn't know what was coming. I seen it. And it was like, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. That was that. That yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I remember that guy was sitting on a bench. He had a blue button-up shirt on, man, and it just started slowly just turning red. Yeah. Because he didn't want to check in, you know. And yeah. 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 I remember a good one I saw when I was there at uh, Corcoran. I was, I was on the yard. I was going to the infirmary. I had a ducket to go to the infirmary. And uh, I was walking the track with this guy from up north. I forgot his name. And, and uh, my homeboys were – as we walked the track, I see my Mexican homeboys from Dago putting the knife together, you know. And I give the dude a heads up, like, hey, check that out, you know. And uh, <laughs> so we're walking the track, you know, we got behind him. And there yeah. was a white dude, South Sider there, you know. Yeah. He just came out of the shoe. I guess he was from Dago also. And uh, and uh, so it was a, it was a, uh, he was a South Sider, but he was a queer, you know. And uh, he was a queer? Yeah, yeah, he was in my building. He had long hair. I mean, almost looked like a girl, you know, but he was yeah. not, you know. But uh, he had the piece, you know, and he was left-handed. And that guy kept looking over his shoulder, you know. He's looking over his right shoulder because they were, like, he was here and then behind him was a couple other guys, you know, and that, and that queer, you know. And, uh, and I kept looking over his shoulder, man, like, you know, right hand, you know. And he turned his head back around, man, and that dude stabbed him about five or six times, you know, on the side oh. and oh. dropped him. And we were like 20 feet right behind them, you know. We just walked right by the guy, you know. <laughs> we just kept yeah. walking the track, you know. That's what you're supposed to do, though, right? You, yeah. you don't want to get involved. Yeah, then we just hit the grass and kicked back. Needless to say, you know, I didn't get to go on my ducket that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> The nerve of that guy getting stabbed, interrupting your duck. Yeah, right? man, you know. <laughs> and that's kind of the mentality you get once you've been there a while. It's like, man, that son of a bitch, you know. Why don't they wait five more minutes to stab him, you know? Yeah, or, or, or you're, 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 the, you're the next guy in the canteen line. The yard goes down and somebody gets booked or something. Oh, know? man, it's the worst, ain't it? <laughs> you know? Like, people don't realize how much that canteen means to a guy, you know? Especially a big guy. Yeah, your coffee drinker, your big fat guy, you know, like to eat soup and shit. Soups and beans. I was a tear tender there in building four and uh you remember Opie? I, I remember the name. I can't remember you know I can't San remember. Diego kinda of little guy. He was a dope fiend and uh you know that I had a little juice. I've been there a while. I could go in and out of the building sometimes, you know, and I'm like, I'm gonna go out to the yard. And they have two pop gates, you know, the front one and the back yeah. one. So, yeah, front uh, gate open and the back gate was open. And I was going out and Opie was coming in. He was like this, you know, and yeah, he had a knife sticking out his neck right there. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Opie goes, he stabbed me in my neck. <laughs> 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 I had to see it, man. It was funny, you know. <laughs> 
Hey, you know, you should have paid that dope debt, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing, too. That's what nine times out of ten, somebody's going to get whacked. It's over a dope debt, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was never uh, a racial thing either. You know? No. People just want their money. You know? Yeah, I mean, guys get mad. They're...